has a special meaning to me. Yes. What this brother just sung. My uh, mother is 79 or 89 years old. She lives in Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's right. That's right. 1953, the doctors in Chicago, Illinois said, you've got a rare blood disease and there's nothing can be done for you. You've got about 60 days to live. My God. The doctors told dad to, uh, if uh, mom had any end of the line to make sure that she'd whip them. She didn't have long to live. So dad sold everything that we had and we moved down to Butler County, Kentucky. My uh, grandmother and one of my uncles, Sammy Burden, was in a church at 28th and Wilson in Louisville, Kentucky. I was there. And uh, Uncle Sammy told my mother, why don't you come with me to go to this church? So those people believe in praying for you and laying hands on you, and God heals you. Right. You know, you don't have anything to lose. <laughs> so she done that. Lord. She went to 28th and Wilson, and you know, when we lived in Illinois, we'd never been in churches before. That wasn't a part of uh, that wasn't a part of our routine. Not even at Christmas time. You know. But we entered into a place that was very peculiar. Yes. The people got up and walked the aisles and shouted. <laughs> Amen. They didn't think like speaking in tongues. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and they, they, they loved each other. Yeah. You know, you heard that song, uh, what was it, Tom? Uh, I found a people who care. I found yes. a people who Brother, my yes. mother found a people that care. All right. Yeah. They laid hands on her and began to pray for her. She'd never been in the church before. She began to speak in tongues. Glory to God. It just fell on her. Yes. She got what all of those God. things that the doctor said couldn't be helped. They were gone. What a mighty God. They were gone. God. What a mighty God. God had healed her. Mighty God. 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 I went through some things lately that uh, has, has my spirit very humble it may need that. Bless him, Lord. I, I feel God when I never felt him before. Bless him, Lord. Amen. Just the least little thing can quicken the heart. Bless him, Lord. And I feel that, that Holy Ghost begin to roll. Come Thank on. you, Father. And to move. Thank you, Father. My youngest brother uh, become a drug addict and, and uh, alcoholic, and he was at the bottom of the barrel. We talked with him, and I prayed with him. I told him, I said, brother, when you get ready to come to God, let me know, and I'll help you in all I can. Well, he did. He came, uh, I was up with Brother George Blevins in Louisville, and had my, I looked back one Sunday afternoon to my brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. See, my brother had prayed, my and repeatedly, God, I've got three more. My Lord. Let me see him come back into the church. Let me see him return to you again. Yes. Rick walked through those doors. And he told his two girls, he said, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. home. I'm coming home. He had been going to church about five weeks and he would come home or he'd come in one Sunday. He said, boys, I'm feeling rough. I've got to go lay down for a while. And he didn't live very far from the church, but just within a matter of uh, five or six blocks, he was driving home and he had a heart attack. And his car in a seizure at the same time. And his car jumped the, uh, the gutter in there and hit an old parked car and it broke its neck. He laid for five months in the hospital and couldn't hardly move. But every time we'd go see him, the thing that he would tell us is, boys, don't never leave the church. My Lord. Don't never leave the church. It's the only hope that you've got. My Lord. In this world, in the condition it's in, the only hope that we have is in Jesus Christ. Yes. There's no hope out there. There's nothing out there for any of us. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The world doesn't hold anything to you but sorrow. 
That's all fair. Amen. And that song, I know each and every one of our mothers that prayed. Come on, on Brother Dale. Amen. We reach out to that. God is letting us be able to return to Him. In this day, in this hour, we need yes. more than anything yes. than to be able to put our feet in, in, in solid on this thing. Oh, come on. Now, not back up and come not on. be complacent with the rest of the world. Come on, Brother Dale. Amen. Rather look at the way that the, the world, the, the religious world has gone today. My God. There's no shame out there anymore. There's no godliness there, hardly. Uh, you, you have uh, where the homosexuals are, are, are actually ministers of the different faces. My God. Oh, God, that's the thing that God hates worse than anything. And we turned our back as a country. Yes. As a country, we turned our back on our God. Away from God. I know that you've heard this before, but when God, when the United States took prayer out of the church, man, let Jones come in. And there's been nothing but heaven. There's been nothing but murder. There's been nothing but trouble. You know, you can't get up and read the Bible in the schools anymore. But you can't have prayer in the schools anymore. Those things are gone. The days that we lived in and the, the leisure that we was able to serve God in, those days are gone. Brother, it's time that we begin to wake up. Come on. It's time to do this revival that's coming up next Come on. Week. Amen. Brother, you ought to be able to tell all of your neighbors Pull about that. Pull yeah, there's a place in Bradyton to where you can get off the floor. There's a place where we can Pull come and be able to receive the Spirit. And it takes Pull the Lord God. Yeah. Oh, my right. God. As we go into my way. brother after five months died, he was stronger in those five months. He never left the faith and he never wavered. He couldn't move. My God. God had him in a place where he had to depend on him. And he couldn't move, so he turned the only thing that could touch him or give him any comfort at all was in Jesus Christ. My Lord. And he held to that. He held to that to the end. My older brother, there was three of us boys in the 19... The latter part of 1953, we all received the baptism of the Holy Ghost laying flat of our backs Lord. at the altar at 28th and Wilson. All three of us did. Lord. And my older brother, six weeks after we had the ceremony for my younger brother, he was killed in automobile. Mm -hmm. Whether that grandmother or that mother of mine that's 89 years old, there was a year there that life was awfully hard on her. But she knew that there was only one thing in all that, that comforter that only Jesus Christ can give you. My God. Brother, I know what she felt when she lost my father, my Lord. her husband, and then her two children. That had gone that way. But she's held fast to oh Jesus God. Christ. Yeah. Because it's the only place that she's received I any help. Yes. It's the only place that she's received any help. I, I've experienced losing my wife of 49 years. And oh, it's so hard. But I know that the only hope that I have is in Jesus Christ. The only comfort that I can have is in Jesus Christ. I've got three boys and they love me and I love them. But you know each night when I lay down and put my head Upon my pillow, there's only one person that can give me that comfort. And that's in Jesus Christ. If you don't have him tonight, if you haven't enjoyed him tonight, if you aren't using him to the fullest of his ability tonight, then we need to get that on him. We really do. We need that more than anything. This country needs our help. We need the Lord. Jesus Christ. Without him, we're not going to be able to face these things that come to us. I don't know if you're ever familiar with the book of Fox's Book of Mortars. If you're not, you ought to read it. You ought to go do it because those are things that are coming our way. Those aren't things that just happened in the 15th century, the 14th, and the 12th century. They did happen there. But they're also happening right now in the world in the 20th century. In the 21st century, in our time. In our time. These are things that are happening right now. Amen. We're seeing a massacre of, 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 uh, 
of Christians that are herded together in churches in South Africa and the birth and in India. In these different countries, those, those aren't things that happen.